In 2015, a nonprofit company called OpenAI was founded by world-class research engineers and scientists and funded by a group of the biggest names in Silicon Valley who collectively donated $1 billion to a cause. They are the AI research and deployment company behind a couple of products you've probably heard of, like Dolly2 and ChatGPT. When founded, they had one goal in mind, to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. But just last month, on January 23rd, 2023, OpenAI accepted a $10 billion investment from Microsoft on top of Microsoft's previous investment of $1 billion in 2019, making Microsoft a reported 49% stakeholder receiving 75% of OpenAI's profits until it secures its investment return. At face value, it looks like any other investment into a budding, thriving company, but is it? Because just after Microsoft's initial investment in 2019, OpenAI legally restructured from a non-profit company to a cat for profit company with ongoing collaborations exclusively with Microsoft. So how did we get here? Why did OpenAI go from nonprofit for humanity to a for profit that's heavily intertwined with Microsoft? And what has OpenAI accomplished in the past six, seven years? Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about and a whole lot more from the founders to the technological research and achievements, the products and funding, and how their mission may have shifted over time. This is the untold story of OpenAI. So it all started when OpenAI was founded back in 2015, when a group of passionate entrepreneurs, scientists, and researchers gathered together for one reason, artificial intelligence with the belief that AI should be an extension of individual human wills and in the spirit of liberty, as broadly and evenly distributed as possible. And just like that, OpenAI was born. Just to give you some context, the world was a different place back then. Many of us were anticipating the release of the iPhone 6S or on our way to watch the Furious 7 movie just to leave crying as Paul Walker drives off into the sunset to the tune of See You Again. A time when robot and AI panic was rampant, with most people thinking of AI as a technological threat that'll cause mass unemployment or as our biggest existential threat, as Elon Musk put it or the few that still just picture Arnold Schwarzenegger as Terminator. But the concept of OpenAI was to break down the stigma of AI to create something new and innovative, something that could help humanity not destroy it. That's why some of the best and brightest minds in the industry came together to pledge that $1 billion into this startup, not as an investment, mind you, but as a donation all to build this nonprofit artificial intelligence research company with a goal to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. Hmm, interesting. And that's what they began to do. In April of 2016, just five months after OpenAI was introduced, they released their first product, OpenAI Gym. Now, it's not your typical gym, but a toolkit for developing and comparing reinforcement learning algorithms that consists of a growing suite of environments, from simulator robots to Atari games, and a site for comparing and reproducing results. If you aren't familiar with reinforcement learning, well, it's a subfield of machine learning concerned with decision making and motor control. Basically, it's just a way for computers to learn how to do things by themselves via trial and error. And OpenAI Gym gave us an environment to do just that. Shortly after Jim's release, OpenAI released a blog post giving us a bit more insight into their technical goals, that is, measure progress, build a household robot, build an agent with useful natural language understanding, and solve a wide variety of games using a single agent. And to no surprise, all of this will come to fruition in the near future. By building upon the data gathered from Jim, OpenAI released Universe in December of 2016, just eight months after the release of Jim. Universe is a software platform for measuring and training in AI's general intelligence across the world's supply of games, websites, and other applications. It's like a more advanced version of Gym where any program can be turned into a gym environment with a wider variety of tasks and more involvement in giving reinforcement learning networks and algorithms the ability to interact with the real world, playing games, using a virtual keyboard and mouse to interact with buttons and sliders on web pages, and much more. 
It's exactly what they laid out in goal four of their technical goals we just talked about. But this was only possible with support from many companies like EA, Valve, NVIDIA, and Microsoft Studios. OpenAI needed permission on games and other tasks for Universe to use. This was their first big foray into working with other companies aside from a bit of previous support from NVIDIA, Nirvana, and AWS. Universe really proved to be incredible. With its most impressive feat, OpenAI 5, an AI specialized in Dota 2, a game where most specialists agreed is harder than chess and Go. Initially, OpenAI's bot could beat the world's top professionals at 1v1 matches in Dota 2, but Dota 2 is a 5v5 game. So that was the ultimate goal, hence the name OpenAI 5. So they worked on it for years, defeating bots, then real players in restricted game modes, a lot of back and forth play that is, until April 13th, 2019, when OpenAI 5 beat the Dota 2 World Champions in back-to-back -back games, becoming the first AI to beat the World Champions in an esports game. But what's more impressive is that the bot learned the game from scratch by self-play, without using imitation learning or tree search. Truly an amazing accomplishment in artificial intelligence done by OpenAI. And Bill Gates thought so too, as he tweeted out how it was a huge milestone in advancing artificial intelligence because the victory required teamwork and collaboration. He said this the first time OpenAI 5 defeated humans in a restricted game about a year prior. And this tweet marks Bill Gates' first acknowledgement of the company only after the leaving of Elon Musk earlier that year in February 2018. Coincidence? Eh, you tell me. Considering Elon Musk and Bill Gates have never been on the best of terms, maybe not. Speaking of which, Elon Musk, the co-founder of OpenAI, decided to leave the board due to a potential future conflict with Tesla's AI development. Since Tesla and OpenAI both do research and development of AI tools, it's understandable that Elon Musk decided to leave. Which I can appreciate, since many other CEOs and the like would leverage that relationship in one company to benefit the other. Hmm. Where have we seen this before? But Elon's departure did not slow things down. The summer after he left, OpenAI came out with another innovation, Learning Dexterity, a human-like robot hand to manipulate physical objects with unprecedented dexterity called Dactyl. Dactyl learns from scratch using the same general purpose reinforcement learning algorithm and code as OpenAI 5, proving that it's possible to train agents in simulation and have them solve real world tasks without physically accurate modeling of the world. Something that should not go unnoticed. Another step in achieving their goals. And then comes the aforementioned $1 billion investment from Microsoft. Quickly followed by OpenAI going from non-profit to for-profit. Or if we want to hit this with a, well, actually, it actually created OpenAI LP, a new cat profit company they defined as a hybrid of a for-profit and non-profit, quote, to increase their ability to raise capital while still serving our mission. They exclaimed, our day-to-day -day work is not changing. Today, we believe we can build the most value by focusing exclusively on developing new AI technologies, not commercial products. The decision to take on this investment from Microsoft and turn into a for-profit company came as a bit of a shock to many people. Understandably so. Remember, a part of OpenAI's initial goal stated, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. And taking on capital investments like this, well, <laughs> let's just say I bet Microsoft is looking for just that, a financial return, one way or another. Which is exactly why OpenAI switched to for-profit. They said they created OpenAI LP because it allows them to rapidly increase investments in compute and talent while including checks and balances to actualize their mission. This decision shocked me as well, but it's one I can also understand. It allows them to raise more money to achieve their goals in AI research and innovation because to put it bluntly, this shit's expensive. But this served as a turning point for OpenAI, a once open source nonprofit for humanity with no need to generate financial return, now a for-profit company backed by Microsoft, soon to be no longer open source, but we'll get to that. OpenAI continued their work from before Microsoft's investment, releasing many products and research discoveries in the same year. MuseNet, a deep neural network that can generate four-minute musical compositions with ten different instruments and can combine styles from country to Mozart to the Beatles, as well as solving Rubik's Cube with a robot hand. Yeah, you remember Dactyl? It's progressing. And finally, GPT-2 the precursor to GPT-3, which is what ChatGPT is built on. I'm sure you've heard of that. 
But as OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft progressed, we, we saw a shift. Not necessarily with the technological advancements, but with how closely intertwined much of OpenAI's products became with Microsoft. It's actually astounding. For example, when GPT was released, the source code and model weights were publicly available for all to see and use. When GPT-2 was released, the source code and model weights were not, that is until later on when deemed safe. But when OpenAI released GPT-3 in 2020, an announcement came along with it of Microsoft's exclusive license to it. That is only Microsoft has access to GPT-3's underlying model no open source code or model weights. We can only use GPT-3 via an API provided exclusively through APIs offered by OpenAI and Microsoft. This marks OpenAI's first commercial product, the API. Even though just a year prior when they created OpenAI LP, they said their day-to-day -day work is not changing. We believe we can build the most value by focusing exclusively on developing new technologies, not commercial products. But the API is a commercial product. So they decided to release a commercial product all while discontinuing the open sourcing and giving Microsoft exclusive rights to the GPT-3 code. But why? Well, they answered this. They state, we see developing commercial products as one of the ways to make sure we have enough funding to succeed, which helps us pay for ongoing AI research, safety, and policy efforts. But they already knew they had to do all of that when they went for profit, but are now going back on what they said. That's the reoccurring theme that I keep seeing. They say or do one thing, then do the opposite. Once non-profit, now for-profit. Once open source, now closed source. Once denying commercial products, now releasing commercial products. All of which occurred after Microsoft's initial investment in 2019. Still believe in coincidences? OpenAI has an answer for us though. In their FAQ for the API, they answered some of these points we brought up. Why did OpenAI decide to release a commercial product? So they have enough funding to succeed in what they care about most, ensuring artificial general intelligence benefits everyone. And why did OpenAI choose to release an API instead of open sourcing the models? This is for GPT-3. Commercializing, safety, policy efforts, more accessibility to smaller businesses and organizations due to the large complex models and to prevent misuse of the technology. And look, I have no problem with the company turning a profit, but the blatant hypocrisy and switching of OpenAI is what gets me. At least they admit it as their main reason in closed sourcing GPT-3 that it's to make money. Uh, I mean, I guess that's respectable. But what are your thoughts on it? Comment below right now and it, let's see if it changes by the end of the video because we're not done and neither is OpenAI. They continue to make progress in the field of artificial intelligence. In 2021, they announced CLIP, a neural network which efficiently learns visual concepts from natural language supervision. DALI, which you may have heard of, a neural network that creates images from text captions for a wide range of concepts expressible in natural language. They also discovered neurons in CLIP that respond to the same concept, whether presented literally, symbolically, or conceptually, and they released OpenAI Codex, their second commercial product and a descendant of GPT-3, an AI system that translates natural language to code, also known as the AI model that powers GitHub Copilot, which they built and launched in partnership with GitHub a month prior. Now, why do I emphasize this? Well, if you don't know, Microsoft owns GitHub. They acquired them back in 2018. And this gave GitHub a massive head start to their competitors who want to use Codex for their own AI code tools. It's beginning to seem like OpenAI is prioritizing Microsoft's goals over their own. But this also sparked another controversy, which I've spoken about in the past. That is, Codex training data contains billions of lines of source code from publicly available sources, including code in public GitHub repositories. Remember, Codex is a commercial product. GitHub Copilot is a commercial product. Is this legal? What about using it? Because the GitHub CEO himself, Nat Friedman, has concerns about the legal implications of using Copilot. And as Epic Games founder and CEO Tim Sweeney pointed out, this system isn't learning high-level ideas and algorithms from repositories and then independently authoring a new implementation. It's just concatenating character sequences from other people's work. Going deeper, even if Copilot didn't copy the code verbatim, which has proven to be true in, in the case in, in this instance, 
An ethical question arises. Is it okay for companies like GitHub or OpenAI to train these systems on open source code generated by thousands of developers to then sell the use of these systems to those same developers? Well, I'll let you be the judge. OpenAI then goes on to announce two of the most hype products of 2022, Dolly2 and ChatGPT. Have you ever seen a polar bear playing bass? Or a robot painted like a Picasso? Didn't think so. Dolly2 is a new AI system from OpenAI that can take simple text descriptions like a koala dunking a basketball and turn them into photorealistic images that have never existed before. And the technology behind it is incredibly interesting. It, it uses a process called diffusion, which starts with a pattern of random dots and gradually alters that pattern towards an image when it recognizes specific aspects of that image. A much needed upgrade to the first version of Dolly released a year prior in 2021. OpenAI's hope is that Dolly 2 will empower people to express themselves creatively. Dolly 2 also helps us understand how advanced AI systems see and understand our world, which is critical to their mission of creating AI that benefits humanity. And as much as I love Dolly 2, uh, Mid Journey is quite a bit better, unfortunately, another controversy arose potential copyright infringement due to the data Dolly 2 was trained on. But all that legal stuff is boring and can be talked about another time. You just let me know when. The second, ChatGPT. My all-time favorite OpenAI release, without a doubt, is indicated by the fact that I created an entire video on why everyone's obsessed with it, including myself. I go into full detail in that video, but to briefly mention it here, ChatGPT is a model which interacts in a conversational way and is fine-tuned from a model in the GPT 3.5 series. It's a chatbot on steroids, if you will. After its public beta release on November 30th, 2022, it crossed 1 million users in the first five days. And it's kind of disrupting every industry with schools blocking access, Stack Overflow banning users from submitting generated answers, and the fact that it can create malware from scratch. It can write for you, it can code for you, and it's really amazing what OpenAI has accomplished in the field of artificial intelligence. There's no denying their achievements. It's, it's just that, would it have been possible to be the company they had originally set up to be without these investments? On one hand, I understand what capital can do to remove roadblocks, to allow for innovation. But on the other hand, I, I wonder if OpenAI has abandoned their original mission of being for humanity. I, I, I think the developers still have that goal in mind, but the company, they've gone from open and free to closed and paid from focusing exclusively on developing new AI technologies to seemingly focusing on commercial products. So taking what I laid out here and comparing the actions OpenAI took prior to the 2019 Microsoft investment to the actions taking after, what do you think? Personally, I like the progress OpenAI is making and if they would have gone belly up, if they stuck to their original mission, then I'm glad they changed it. This version of OpenAI is better than no version at all. However, I think they should have had a plan for commercialization from the get-go instead of being a nonprofit. That, that's what I would have done. Instead of relying on outside funding with the innovations they're making, they could have funded themselves via the GPT-3 API, Dolly2, ChatGPT, Codex, and any other way they could have figured out how to monetize to fund their ongoing research. It, and, and let's be honest, even if it was open source at this point in time, I bet all of us would still pay for the API because it's easier. But again, I haven't seen their books. The outside investments allowed them to hire more talent and scale their compute. Would they have been able to make the same progress without it? I don't know. And it's easy for me to say all of this retrospectively, oh, just make money like this and you should have structured it like that. But I'm not into the trenches. I do still think my criticism of their flip-flopping is fair though because they establish themselves as a certain type of company with certain goals and standards in mind that were thrown out the window when Microsoft waved a billion dollars in their face. And, and being the brightest minds in this industry, they knew what it took to build a company like this, so I don't believe these costs were unforeseen. So now that Microsoft just invested an extra $10 billion, I'm interested to see what the future holds for OpenAI. What do you think? Should OpenAI have accepted this huge investment from Microsoft? If Elon Musk was still in the picture, how would he have shaped OpenAI's path? Let me know your thoughts below. All we can do at this point is hope for the best. Until next time.